Okay, in this tutorial, what I want to do is I want to take this graphic I have here on my home page and I want to be able to have it rotate to to between a variety of images. So instead of just having one image show, I want to showcase a variety of different type of golfers. Um, so what I want to do here is I'm going to be using an array and I'm going to go in and just have it basically go from one image to another. And I'm going to set up simply use an array and then I'm going to use what we call a set timeout and just kind of look at uh, some other code that you can do in JavaScript uh, to create this uh, interaction or this, this piece to, to the image automatically um, to go in and adjust. So the first thing I want to do, let's, let's go back to brackets here and this is just my text editor. Um, I already have up here at the top and again when you work with JavaScript um, I, I have uh, the jQuery library already linked up here at the top uh, in my head section. Um, if I want to do any fading out, fading in, um, any type of special effects that jQuery is, I have to have that library linked. It's a subset library of JavaScript. It's JavaScript, but it, uh, you need it to have it make sure to, to work with that. So down here in the bottom uh, of our code, <clears throat> this is where we're going to go in and we have the image tag here. We're going to automatically have it rotate multiple images. And in my folder that I have for golfers, I have a, a folder called images, and I have it uh, going in and um, adjusting for golfer one, golfer two, golfer three. So if I go to my images folder here, you will see golfer, golfer zero, golfer one, golfer two. You're going to find that if you're going to work and rotate mon images, it sometimes is easier to go in and uh, name it the same except give it a index number at the end because then you can use JavaScript to basically create a variable to count up one or count up two and 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 so automatically can knows to go to the next image. So for this to, to work I'm going to need a uh, array and I'm going to go in and I'm going to store all those images that I have in the images folder right here I want to store the location. So if you remember correctly in HTML, if we go in and we work with an image tag, you have to tell it the source. The source is images slash golfer.jpg. If you don't, it doesn't be able it's not able to find it. So what we're going to do is we're going to store the um, source of each of those images in the array. So what I want to do. I'm going to go all the way back up here at the top, okay, and uh, I already have a script tag in here um, in my um, head section, and of course I already have what we call a document ready, which makes it, when the page loads, it's going to run something on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and document ready, I'm going to put in my variable um, that's going to store the images. So automatically, as you can see here, in the array, I'm giving a variable name called banners, and I'm creating a new array. There's a different way syntax you can write this out. There's three different ways you can write out your arrays. Um, I like doing this way for new users so they can see it say new array. Um, and then in the parentheses, you have to create each instance of the item that you want stored, and you separate it by a comma, separate by a comma. So here, notice in quotation marks, um, it's single quotes, you can use double quotes as well. Um, it says images slash golfer zero dot jpeg, that's the source. Now, what we need to do is we need a way to track our array index of the image because when you work with array, you're working with indexing. And so basically the first item up here is assigned an index value of zero one, two, three. So what we have to do is we have to go in and track that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another variable called current banner and I'm going to assign it to zero. So I'm just going to place it right after the array itself. And again, it's just a simple variable itself, and we're just starting off with zero. 
Now what we're going to do here is we're going to have a function that's going to help us display the banner. It's going to have a function to help us display the banner. So we're going to create a function um, called display banner. And so when you ever create a custom function, it automatically um, you're going to have to have an event to call it to run. Oops, excuse me. Okay, so uh, the other thing as I, I take a look here, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this uh, two, two variables, I'm going to move it outside of doc ready. So I'm going to just cut it out, I'm going to put it right up here at the top. Nothing major here. Um, typically I like to have the variables outside it so it calls for it r right away. And then doc ready I'm going to have that event to call my function. Now the function I'm going to, again, I'm going to go in and create is I'm going to create a function that basically uh, is going to display the rotating banner. And so what I need to do is I'm going to come down here and uh, right after the doc ready, I'm going to type in the display banner. I'm using camel case to, for the names. Okay, and then what I'm doing is I'm putting those curly braces in because what you're going to do is you're going to automatically um, put in your lines of script within those curly braces. Now what I want to do is I want to have something that counts up one. And so what I'm going to do is have the variable that basically looks at where I'm at and counts up one from the zero. So I'm going to take that current banner and I'm just going to do a plus plus. That means it's going to indicate and add plus one to it. Now, what we have to do now is so as it goes and increases up to you know one every time, we need to go in and check and see if we're at the end of the array. So if we're at the end of the array, we need to go back to zero. To do that, we'll just use a simple if statement. And we'll, we'll basically say, we'll have it look at the variable and we'll say, does it match the end? And the way we do that is we have the property called dot length. And dot length, when you look at an array, it will look at how many items are in the array. And then that indicates that we're at the end. And then all we're going to do is reassign, reassign the variable back to zero. Okay, so we have an if statement, and all I'm doing here is in parentheses, I'm putting in current banner matches banners.length, and the banners is the array. So when we have a property, all we have to do is use the dot operator and then add the property name. It knows to count up how many items in the array, and if it matches it, then what we'll do is it'll go back in the curly braces and assign it the current banner back to zero. If it's not at the end, then it will not reassign that. So now what we need to do, we have to go in and have it reassign the source of the image to the image tag. So when it goes to the next image, the source itself, we need to replace what's there in our image tag. So there's a variety of different ways of doing it, but I like using a jQuery um, um, method called the ATTR method, which stands for attribute. And what I'm going to have it do is I'm going to have it change the source attribute of the image tag. Now, when we look at this, down here at the bottom of the image tag, you'll notice that it was given an ID called rotate banner. So usually when we work with jQuery or you know JavaScript, we always select something with a ID or we select it with a class. So that way we can go and apply certain things to it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply after my if statement here, I'm going to add, I'm going to have it using a little jQuery. And so with jQuery, I'm just going to use this method called ATTR. But I have to start off with a dollar sign. I have to select my ID. I'm going to apply the dot attribute method and then in parentheses uh, within curly braces I have to tell it what the source is and what the alt is. And for the source what I'm doing here is I'm just simply going in and indicating the array 
and the in the square brackets whenever you have square brackets it knows to that's the index value the index value right you know if we start this up here at the very top is value of zero so when we go and add one then that will look at one so you gotta remember the index value in array it starts off with zero one two three and goes that way now the key here is I want the function or the image to rotate every two seconds and this is simply going in I'm going to create a loop but I'm going to create a loop by going in using what we call a set timeout and I'm going to tell it to run display banner every two seconds. When you use a set timeout, it's a one-shot timer and so what we're doing is if we put this within the function itself, I'm going to put it right here in the function and it's called set timeout and then in parentheses it has two arguments. You have to tell it what to run and when to run it and the timing event is that it's done in milliseconds so 2000 indicates two seconds. So what we're doing here is we're putting this at the bottom of the function and we're saying, hey, run display banner, which creates that loop, and it's going to run it in two seconds. So when it runs it, it's going to come back up and run it again. It comes down here and waits two seconds and runs again. Now all I need up here in my doc ready is an event. And so I have my function all set up. Now I just have to have an event and I'm just going to tell it in doc ready to run display banner and all I do is I write out the function name with the parentheses now I'm going to hit, go ahead and save this okay go ahead and open this up and uh, notice the image here how it's rotating every two seconds So with this, you know, once you want to go in and you want to create a, uh, a rotation of images, it's actually easy to do. You have to use an array, and you got to go in and create a custom function. Um, inside that function, you have to have a way to count up your array, and then you have to have it call the function over again, and that's how we did with the set timeout. So it's a nice little feature that you can do. Now there's some other things you can do to create a transition and that's where jQuery, jQuery comes in play when you do fade ins, fade outs um, but this is just a very basic uh, technique that you can go in and utilize.